the word family farm is being kicked around and our definitions of family farms might be totally different in here. What's your definition of a family farm? It's, Tell it's, me the cows, the numbers. Is it? But, you've referred to 30 hectares fairly regular. Is it under 100 cows from what I can gather look, what look, you're saying? Look, the, 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 the average dairy size is, is in around between 85 and 90 cows as, as an average. Um, you know, I suppose... So you're talking no, about under 100 cows as no, the family well, farm? No, no two farms are the same. Yeah, I know um, that, but I'm asking what's the definition of a family farm in the line? It, it's, 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 where, it's where the unit uh, can maintain a, a quality of life uh, for the family farm. And would that be 100 cows or...? From an economic perspective. Look, I suppose you can be in a dry part of the country, you can have a wet farm, yeah, there can I know. be high costs. <laughs> Yeah, but like on average, uh, I would know dairy guys that would have aged between 80 and 100 and they would feel that they're doing fairly well. Would that be fair to say? Some would, depending on the cost structure. Mm. Um, would it alarm you then that 3,842 derogation farmers are above, uh, 3,642 are above 200 cows? Look, I, I suppose... Do you know, when you talk about the family farm model... Yeah, I mean, you can look at the cow stats and I don't have them here in front of me. Well, they, I'm, I'm only just going by the... I looked for the department figures of what they're seeing. And what they're seeing, above 500 units, just that you'll know, um, they're saying there's 529 farms in derogation. Above 400, there's 411. Above 300, there's 928. Um, above 200, the 1,774. Some of the figures the department has given us. And uh, what I was trying to get my head around, what is, and, and I agree fully with you, by the way, that a farmer on 30 hectares or 40 hectares that has to come down the cows that you talked about shouldn't happen because it'll make them unviable. You need to keep a dairy farmer at the figures you're talking about, in my opinion, 80 to 100 cows. Do you know what, for a family farm, what, what my definition in the West would be, and I know that we might have smaller farms, but I'm just looking at the figures that there's... If you go over the 200 cows and add the two figures together, like it, there's nearly 6,000 farmers altogether over that. Like a 500 dairy uh, herd... A 500 dairy herd, to me, is a commercial operation that's that unfortunately in a lot of places has taken over villages. No, I, oh, I'm up to question this, Deputy, but the, um, I, would, I would suspect that that's livestock units, that's not dairy cows. Yeah, and like, I, that could be my cows. Well, my a cow is a unit at my, the moment. Yeah, that could, be, that could be my cows, my calves, my in-calf yeah, heifers, my it, Well, generally to, a dairyman, in to fairness, be fair doesn't, because generally a dairyman doesn't hold the calves. They get rid of the calves and they hold replacements, 20%. Well, a certain proportion, but a lot of farmers do keep their calves, to be fair. And, like, the, I would be very, very surprised if there's 3,842 dairy farmers above 200 cows. That doesn't sound correct to me. Yeah, maybe, to maybe, the, maybe the figure... I'm only going by the figures. I've, I've just given you that they're saying there's 928 over 300. That over 400, there's 411. Over 500, like, that's... 500 cows, over 500 cows, isn't an ordinary family farm, in my opinion. But, but, but I suppose we need, we, you know, very often they need to be analysed uh, because there can be a set of parents, two, two maybe three sons involved in it, and, and, you know, keeping three, four households going. So no two farms are the same. I the one thing I would have seen, and you know it yourselves in your own ears, I would have seen farmers with 80 and 90 cows and they're farming under the derogation. They're not going near the derogation. They're farming under the 170. And yes, you're right in saying that they are now being put into an awkward situation when you go from the, is it 80 or 85 to 105, depending on the output of the cow. That is going to make the smaller farms. And I think that there should be an exception made for those smaller farms um, in that. But um, with some of the figures I'm looking at, I think that... A hard look needs to be uh, hard. We need to look hard at the four and five and six hundred cows if they're on derogation. Like, Jesus, a living is what we want to make out of farming, not uh, a, a multinational company. Um, in relation to, in relation to um, the problems, just say the derogation, and, and this is the figure I haven't at the moment, and you might be able to tell me. Um, just say the derogation went. 
is 20% not an awful high figure that you're talking about? I was just telling it up there, it's about 300,000 cows. Should to, what would it take out if the derogation went in numbers of cows? Just, uh, or would you have any idea? You, you were saying 20, have a specific 15 figure. to 20% there, and I was just telling it up, there's about a million and a half cows. Would that be fair to say dairy cows in the country? And if you do 10%, it's 150. So, uh, no, no, I'm talking about the derogation, yeah. What would it take, uh, what problems, do, have you any analysis done that if the derogation went, how many cows would be the would be gone? And if the, do you know the new figures that's coming in from the 80 or 85 to 105, that will affect everyone. That's the problem with that one. Um, whether you're in derogation or not, it could actually push you over. Um, have you any analysis done on that? In terms of, if you're talking about 170, uh, Deputy from going from 250 down to 170, is it? Or going from 250 no, to 220? No, but uh, what I'm saying is, in, in the, just said the amount of people, farmers that's in derogation at the moment, if there was no derogation there, how many cows would that force them farmers to be having to reduce? And then on the other side, when it goes, when we're going from the 80 or 85 um, up, to 105, because like going by the figures I've looked at, nearly any cow will go to 105. Would that be fair to say, in the in the way that they're doing it? That's to, and I'm just asking you, what type of a figure would that be? Because in my opinion, like you're you're looking at all farmers under 170 and over 170 in the in the new bands that's coming in. I'm just wondering if you any analysis done on that. I suppose that I, I can take this one. I suppose um, like there's two different things happening here. Um, would say this present or the year coming from the 1st of January coming in 2023 you're looking at the banding coming in yeah now um, if you leave out forget about derogation a lot of farmers even under 170 if they have high, yeah. pr high production cows yeah. they're going to be driven over Correct. 170 and into derogation so that's going to be a huge issue so that's a massive problem um, if you look then come down the, come down the line next year if we go to from 250 down to 220. I mean, what you're talking about going down and derogation gone is catastrophic. Mm. Now, how would that, have you any I'd analysis it, done? It'd be impossible to analyse it, but you'd right. want to look at the amount of land that's involved in dairy and, and the number of cows you'd be able Figures to Figures I have, just that you know that you can, from the department, and look at I'm just presuming these are right, there's under 100 cows at 691 farmers that's in derogation, out of the total farmers. Um, and after that, the rest to it is over 100 cows and keep but, going up. But the extra number, Deputy, I suppose, the extra number of farmers that with the banding coming in that are going to be driven into derogation is going to, is going to increase. Yeah. So you're going to go from probably 7,000 farmers to probably eight or 9,000 farmers. And that's where the family region. farm is going to get really affected yeah. when that comes in, in my opinion. Would you agree? Absolutely, yeah. You're, you're going to get caught. Like, like, there's a perfect storm coming here that the, the, the nitrogen excretion from the cow is increasing... Uh, depending on the on the, the the productivity of the cow, but in most in most cases the family farm is an efficient, uh, you know, pre, pre, uh, well run system. It's producing. Is there a danger? Um, is there a danger? And this is a fear I would have that um, under this new leisures thing that's coming in on the cow, whether she's eighty five or a hundred and and and. Uh, Five. Um, is there a danger that farmers might go to a type of cow that may not have as good of offspring um, that could be very problematic for this country down the line? There's a, there's a, there's a huge, huge danger that that could happen. Uh, but I suppose there is opportunity maybe to, to concentrate on the black and white herd. But you, you asked the question there, about you know moving to the 106, we would estimate that in excess of 25 percent of of dairy farms uh, would come in at in excess of and it's rough figures now 6,300 and something liters because it's 6,500 kgs. It's actually worse and those farmers. You give me that figure again. You, you it's 6,300 and odd liters. Yeah. Um, Many percent. Uh, about 25 percent. Right. And the difficulty is, uh, Deputy Fitzmaurice, that. You know, herds are still maturing and haven't reached their full potential. So in two years' time, that could be 40%. The genetics in that. Well, with, with maturity, you know, the, there, was there was a phase of expansion 
now there's a phase of mature, maturing coming on and you know the, the, the fifth and sixth lactation cows can have significantly more volume than, than a first and second lactation animal and that's going to have huge consequences. Right. Um, in relation to young farmers, you, just one thing, it's a good thing to see, and you, you might you, you, you write about the colleges and that for the longer haul, but in the line of the green certs, in fairness, I think there's a lot of young farmers, thankfully. Um, I know a few places that's booked out even for another while, and that's a good thing that, sh that, that, they're, that they're doing it. Um, what's your vision going forward um, in the line of the family farm as again the bigger farm what would you think on derogation and all these figures would you give us your say what you what what's needed to be done to keep the family farm viable well, you know i suppose there needs to be a significant level of of support uh my colleague john in alluded to the agri environmental scheme that would be you know enticing for all commercial farmers i mean you look back to the 90s uh, there was the reps type scheme, uh, which had a significant value uh, for for farms and. Sorry for sorry for for Pesh for interrupting you, but my honest opinion, in fairness, uh, for any poor dairy farmer that's out there, that anyone that's spreading fertilizer won't get much out of the this agri environmental scheme because you won't be growing these flowers that they're on about growing. <laughs> Well, you know, there, there, there is opportunity, though, and there, there's potential to have measures in place that can have a significant uh, impact from an environmental perspective, uh, whether that's our, our, our habitats, etc. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, it's our belief that there was no effort made uh, to entice these, these farmers in from a, a, a policy or a, a, an options perspective. Uh, and that's regrettable because we should be we should be trying to bring in bring in these farmers and, and, and bring them on board. Um, the more farmers come in under the umbrella of, a, of, of an environmental scheme, um, the more progress that potentially can be made. Yeah, just to correct the thing there, I was just looking at the figures. Yeah, it's six thousand nine hundred and thirteen over a hundred cows, um, and you can take between one hundred and two hundred. You can. You can take, uh, uh, where's my figures? I suppose the difficulty is though, you know, you take 100 cows in 20, you take 100 cows in 1983, mm. uh, it provided a significant uh, level of, of income. Um, you take 100 cows in the late 90s, uh, it provided a significant level of income. And you take the 100 cows today, and it's usually challenging. Mm. The margin has been eroded. And okay. I think Deputy Fitz Morris, in fairness to people out there, um, you know, we'd have members and they'd have gone maybe to 130, 140 cows, maybe uh, husband and wife, uh, father and son, father mm. and daughter, or mother and daughter. They've done that in good faith. They've taken, taken out debt to go to that level. Uh, the debt is based on having a certain number of cows and a certain level of production. And like, that's been completely undermined now. That debt, that debt isn't going to go away. That debt still has to be paid. And, you know, overnight, effectively, we're, we're taking... I in fairness, I don't think you can go doing something overnight because if people have commitments, you can't just take them out. No, but that's what's happening, you know, unfortunately. Like you, it's, it's, you cannot do that. You have to give plenty of notice on something, no more than if we're changing the type of dairy cow we had. You have to do a, a phased transition, or if you don't, you're in trouble. This, this is as significant, I suppose, as, as, as 2015, and that, that was indicated uh, five, six, seven years in advance.